Wow, on camera. Woo! Welcome back. This is our associated DR10 drag car build. We're somewhere in the middle of the build and we're getting stuff done. Our last uh, episode, we finished up the front of the car and we are now going to work on the back of the car. This is brought to you by Fast Eddie Bearings. And it's been a long time since I've done a build. This is kind of a uh, kind of a dip the toe back in on builds. So we are now going to follow the directions here. And we are working on bag four, step one. Bag four. Let's open her up. Let's see what we got going here. And we've got lots of plastic parts. And again, I say this every bag, make sure it's completely empty before you throw it away. You don't want to go dumpster diving looking for that last little piece you can't find. Okay, we've got our screws here. And let's go ahead and open up our screw bag. Put it in our little magnetic tray. If you like what we're doing here, hit the subscribe button. If you don't, then go watch porn. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. We're having fun. I do what I do. I help out people that uh, may not know how to build a kit or they're having problems with the build on one certain part. They can come to the video and check it out and hopefully have fun with the hobby. So, we've got all of our plastic parts here out of the way. I'm looking at the first step here. <clears throat> and we've got a couple parts that we'll be using along with, yeah, we use a lot of parts in this first step. We use almost everything, believe it or not. Okay, whatever. But... We are going to be using our A-arms here, which have still have some tree trunks on them. So let's go ahead and trim those off. And again, I'm using a pair of flat cutters and it makes it a lot cleaner so that there's no nubs or anything on there. Put them in my little trash pile. When you're building, clean is good. When I use my tools, I don't know if you can really see here, but when I use a tool, they're on this little magnet thing, and I put it away. When I'm done with it, I put it away. And when I need it again, I get it out again. And then that way it's not all over the place. Um, if you've got pieces and parts spread all over creation, it's hard. It, it makes it a lot more difficult than it should be. So, are we ready? Take a deep dive. Diver down. Okay, here we go. And we are out of focus from my last scene. Turned off the automatic focus because it was not playing well with us. So, okay, here we go. We are on step one, bag four. Let's scooch this over. We now need to find the rear chassis plate, which looks basically like that. And we want to have what they are calling a C-mount. And that would not be that. That would be this. There we go. This is a C-mount. I've not heard it called that way before. There is a top and a bottom. Um, the top is smooth and the bottom is unfinished. So... We will also take a look, and there's a front and the back. What we're going to call the front has two holes in it. So we're going to place this like this. Now we need to find an M2 by 8 button. I think M2. That's a little one. M2 by 8. It is not showing an M2. By eight on the list. So 
I'm going to assume this is an M2 by 8 button head screw. Because the rest of them, most of them are M3s, and this looks to be the only M2 in there. Okay, so we are going to use the only M2 button head screw in there, and that is going to hold this C plate onto the rear chassis plate, I presume. And that is not a two millimeter. <laughs> Let me go ahead and screw that on. Sorry, we don't have a proper horn position for the camera here. Here we go. I'm going to screw that in. Make sure we don't over torque that down just till it touches. Okay, seems nice and tight. I think we got that squared away. Okay, so now we need to take our rear A arms and two hinge pins. And we are going to place the A arms. I'm looking at the directions here, like so. Yes, okay. We're laying these down and they are going to tilt up like that. And you can see here that the open part is to the outside, the closed part is to the inside. Okay, and then we are going to find our D mount, which is this one. And there is a top and a bottom. You can see the top has this recess in it. And you can see in the directions that there is a recess there. So we're going to set this over here. And according to this, very interesting, going to fit in there like this, like so. Okay, so to do that, let's take two of our M3 by 14 button heads. So by 14, I believe is going to be this one here. Again, we're going to measure. Yep, we're going to measure on the directions because I don't have calipers with me, and we need to find two of them. So that's going to be these two here. Okay. And we are going to hold this D mount, what they're calling a D mount on. Or are we going to? How are we going to do this? No. We need to first slide, because that's going to capture everything. We need to first slide our... Where did my body pins go? Where they are? My body pins? Um, hinge pins. So let's go ahead and slide a hinge pin. Let's get centered on the camera here. Somehow we got moved over. Okay, so we're going to put the hinge pin in, and that is going to go here, like so. Push into the hole, and we are going to put the hinge pin in this one, and put it into the hole. Now we're going to slide the D mount on. Again, watch the upside has that little recess in it. Go ahead and pinch that together. Wiggle it around until it all fits in. It takes a little bit of finessing, but everything slides together and you're gonna see that it's not gonna be any gaps along here. Now we're going to put our two screws in to hold this contraption together. And I need to loosen my clutch back up. 
because the last time we used this, it was needed to be tightened. There we go. And just like everything else, whenever we have moving parts, we want to make sure that everything is nice and loose. Okay, so we have step number one done. Now it is time for step number two, which is securing the rear bulkhead to the chassis. And we are going to do this looking at the directions that are here. Trying not to cover them up while we do this. This is going to come over here, but it looks like we have a piece of tree here that we have to cut off. go and this slides down on here as I'm looking at this there's it's not wanting to fit in but there's little nubs on the bottom of the chassis here and little holes here that everything fits into. And it's not wanting to fit in. There we go. You get one side in and the other side doesn't want to fit in. I'll bet when I put screws in there that it will fit in just right. And we're going to use four of the M3 by 12 flatheads. There we go. Yeah, it'll fit in once we get it tightened down. So, flatheads. One, two, three. Where's my fourth flathead? Uh-oh. There's three of them. And there it is, it's hiding. So far, we haven't missed any pieces or parts in the kit, which is good. Um, a lot of times when you're building a kit, you can be missing even one screw. will throw you, throw you off your game. So we're putting these four screws into these four holes. And I'm going to put this back one in. See if it cinches it down properly. Because I'm having a little problem with, with everything fitting. Just doesn't want to snap into place. There we go. The problem, actually, is interesting. There's a little bit of flashing along in here that's not allowing that to sit in properly. There we go. You can see that, I don't know, catch the light properly here. And actually, let me focus in here a little bit more. You'll be able to see what I'm talking about.
right in here, the chassis is actually a little bit warped in the right in the center here, which everything fits right and it's not going to be a problem. Um, but it did keep this from wanting to cinch down properly. So we're all good to go now. Let me back out here a little bit. Refocus. Come on. There we go. So yes, we are all on here properly with these four screws. Now we need to take this... They call it a, what are they, what are they calling this piece? They're not even calling it anything. A rear chassis brace, okay. So we're going to take this rear chassis brace, and that is going to, looks like it sets right on here. And again, we're having that little bit of alignment problem. There we go. Nope. Now we're back up on this side. Yeah, that bowing on here is giving us a little bit of an alignment problem. It'll fit on one side, <clears throat> and it doesn't want to align on the other side unless we really press it down like that. <clears throat> but we got it. Okay, so now we need to put in M3 by 10 button heads. So there should be two of these. I'm gonna use our little measuring thing over here to make sure these are actually 10s and they're not. These are 16s. So we'll have to get 10s, two 10s out of our bucket. I believe that that's these. Measuring them, there we go. And those are going to go into the rear most holes. So we're going to have one here and one here. Get those little puppies cinched down. Move on to our next step here, which is putting on ball studs. And these two ball studs are also going to have two millimeter washers. Is it washer or washer? I don't know. Put it in the comments below. Washer? Is it a washer or a washer? And these are going on the inside most front holes. So we'll get these started in, get one in there, and then we'll put the washer, washer, washer. 